So the subjunctive is a mood that we use in Spanish. It's really difficult to remember when we use the subjunctive. So here are a few examples, a list of when we use it and how we use it. So the subjunctive is used for things of doubt or uncertainty, used for hopes, wishes, desires. It is used for probability or hypothetical situations, as well as it's used for emotional reactions to something. Now the reason why subjunctive is pretty tough is because in English, we, although we do have a subjunctive, we often use it incorrectly. So it's hard to think of examples of when we would use this in English if we don't really use it correctly. The formula that we use is we take the yo form of a verb, you're going to drop the o, and then you're going to add the endings. These are often the opposite ending of what we use in the present tense. So for ar, it's going to be a, ace, a, ace, a, amos, ace, and then an. And then for the ir and er verbs, it's the opposite ending. So we're going to have a, as, a, amos, ice. On. So it's the same endings as in the present, just kind of flip-flopped. And instead of having O at the, for the yo form, we have E in the AR and A in the IR, ER. Flip-flop means that the AR verbs have now turned into E, whereas the IR, ER verbs have now turned into A. If we looked at the present tense, it would be uh, for AR verbs AS, A, AM, OS, AIS, and then AN. And then same for the IR, ER would be the opposite ones. We do have to be careful when conjugating these verbs for stem changers, irregular verbs, just like when we were looking in the present tense. Some of these verbs are like pensar, um, which turns into um, piense. So the E turns into IE, or verbs like jugar, um, turns into juegue. Um, so the U turns into UE. And then we have another additional problem with this is that because of phonetics, it's difficult to say juegue, or, you know, I can't really say it because it's pretty difficult. So we add the U there to this verb so that it's easier to say juegue. Now, these are verbs are known as car, gar, zar verbs, which you might have heard of already. These are normally seen in the subjunctive because you change the ending and the phonetics of it change as well. So with car verbs, they turn into k at the end, gar turns into g, and then zar turns into se. Some examples of car, gar, zar verbs, you have like sakar, um, which will become sake, um, I've already put gar there, but that's a gar verb, which becomes juegue. And then a zar verb, like almorzar, this becomes almuerce. And this as well, you have to be careful because it is a stem changing verb. The way to memorize these stem changing verbs is just to look at your present tense verb list. Anything that changes in the stem, like pensar, like almorzar, it's going to stem change in the subjunctive as well. So just be careful of that, keep an eye out. Same with these endings, which will change in the subjunctive. So taking a look at that, hacer, when you conjugate in the present, yo form changes to ago, um, tener, tengo, and so those verbs, as you can see, have a difference. So you just drop the O in that yo form, keep the irregularity, and then you will conjugate it using whichever ending that you need. And then another problem that we have with the subjunctive is when do we use the subjunctive and when do we use the indicative? The indicative is another mood 
and that's seen in the present tense. So when do we use the present tense normally and when do we use the subjunctive mood? With this, we just kind of look back at our list here. Is it an expression of doubt, uncertainty? Is it a hope, wish, or desire? Is it a probability, is it a hypothetical? And is it an emotional reaction? Oftentimes, these expressions are known as K expressions, like canso K, ojalá K, espero K, that sort of stuff. So this means, I think, this one means God willing, this one means hopefully, or I hope that. These are often indicators of the subjunctive being used. You have to be careful here because if there is no K afterwards, if we just had espero, we would not use the subjunctive next. We would use the infinitive. You cannot have two conjugated verbs right next to each other. So let's say, he said, espero. Um, normally, if you didn't have the K, you would probably be um, waiting for someone. So you say, espero, um, you know, Kelly. So that would be, I, I'm waiting for her or for Kelly. The other thing to be careful of is K does not necessarily mean that you will use the subjunctive. You could have an expression such as tango K, which means I need to, or it's you know necessary that. Um, which afterwards, you know, you could say tango K, hacer mi tarea, hacer mi tarea, and so that clearly does not use the subjunctive there. It's just you use the infinitive because you're saying I need to do this. Some examples of the subjunctive. Uh, using some of these K expressions, we could say, espero que RMC, and then I'm going to use the verb ganar to win. So again, we take the yo form, but again, no, drop the O, and then add the opposite ending. And since RMC is a singular third person subject, we'll go to gane, el match. Um, so I hope that RMC wins the game wins the match. We could also say, ojalá. The K is optional. With or without the K, we'll always take the subjunctive right after it. Reciba un A. So, God willing, I will get an A, I will receive an A. We could also say something like, es probable K, a hypothetical situation, a probability K, estes, tenga, hamburgueses. So, it's probable that estes will have hamburgers. So to summarize, we've conjugated ganar to gane. We've conjugated recibir to reciba. And we've conjugated tener to tenga. And as you can see, this uses what I said earlier with retaining the irregular yo form where the g is added into the verb. And we just added the ending to the end of that yo form.